Good morning, true crime friends. How you doing? <clears throat> I'm a little froggy this morning. That little amphibian is back in my throat. Oh, I hate it when that happens. So look, I have a, I have a handy dandy iced coffee right here to keep me all the way together. Hang on. Look, we have a lot to talk about. But don't we always have a lot to talk about, child? Look, but you know what you need to do? Please like this video and subscribe to the channel. It helps other people find us. So look, Sarah Boone. Sarah Boone was back in court yesterday. And I'm just like, oh, this Sarah Boone, she gets on my nerves. If you don't know who Sarah Boone is, let me give you the quick and dirty. Okay, Sarah Boone over there. In, where is Sarah? Oh, Florida, because of course it's Florida. Sarah Boone and her boyfriend, George Torres, had like um, a skosh of a dramatic relationship, right? They was always getting drunk and beating up on each other. Because that's just, you know, that's what love looks, looks like to them. Okay, whatever. Anyway, one night they was over there at the house and they were playing, you know, tiddly wings and painting and doing whatever. And they decided to play adult hide and seek. Now, listen, when I first heard this, I was like, is that a term for getting like, you know, uchi coochie with your, with your loved one? They were like, no, actual hide and seek. And at some point, George got in a suitcase. Sarah put him in a suitcase. George got put in a suitcase and um got zipped in. And then Sarah left him there. And then he had positional asphyxiation which means he was in like a weird position or something I don't know which one and um he was like oh Sarah girl I can't breathe and she was like too bad and so she left him in the suitcase and she stumbled drunkenly up to bed and she fell asleep and when she woke up he was no longer on this mortal coil now listen I have an entire Sarah Boom playlist because Sarah is crazy also this case is fascinating um and so we been waiting for this case to come to trial for four years. But Miss Sarah is like, mm, I know we're almost ready to go to trial, but I'm scared I'm going to get convicted. So can I get a new lawyer? And they were like, um, okay, but just this one time. And she's like, oh, yeah, 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 I promise, just this one time. And then she was like, oh, this lawyer I do not like either. Okay, one more lawyer. Heffa has gone through eight lawyers. She's on her eighth, ninth lawyer, something like that. And finally, it's been four and a half years. The judge is tired of her. The internet is tired of her. Although we here at the internet if I can speak on behalf of all of us child we are perched we are ready for all your shenanigans we love all the crazy because it's interesting and fun to talk about so look also justice for George Torres the girlfriend beater upper I don't <clears throat> I'm not trying to like say bad things about the day you, I, I'm not sure what I can say about young Mr. Torres but um Mm. Anyway, my mama used to say, don't say nothing about the dead unless it's good. He's dead. Good. Anyway, so Sarah and her shenanigans have finally, finally, they, we closing in on this trial, right? And so here's the thing. She ran her mouth too much and the judge was like, I'm sick of you. And so you can no longer have any more free lawyers. So you're going to have to defend yourself. And she was like, oh, your honor, this is, I do not enjoy this. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. And he's like, mm -hmm, girl, that's a you problem. I'm going to get your discovery together, get your files together, get ready for opening statements because you're going to be your own lawyer. And she's like, oh my goodness. And so then she made like a handwritten advertisement. Because she was like, dear anybody in the world, please come and be my lawyer because I don't know what I'm doing. And then this lawyer is like, I will do it. I will take the crazy lady who put her boyfriend in a suitcase and I will come and be her lawyer. And I was like, sir, sir, you are very brave. Also probably crazy, but okay, you gonna come and be her lawyer, good. And the judge was like, mm-hmm, but just cause you coming on this case, that doesn't mean you gonna get extra time. And the lawyer was like, okay, cool, cool, cool. I fully understand that. Also, um, your honor, can I have extra time? And he was like, did you not hear what I just said? And he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. I know that you said that um, with your mouth, but I was hoping that what you meant was I could get some extra time. And the judge was like, no. And I was like, oh, Sarah done uh, effed around and found out. So has her lawyer. So this new lawyer comes to trial yesterday. Now look, please, I have believed in citing my references and I have just spent this morning speed trial and watching real fast over there on Tanika's two cents. You know, Tanika, child, Tanika covers this case soup to nuts, start to finish. She goes through all the court documents. Her little baby sugar bear is there. He's helping out. I think he might be her paralegal or her video assistant or something like that. I'm gonna put a link to Tanika in the, um, in the description box of this video. So anyway, um, I'm over there, over there on Tanika's and I'm watching, uh, Sarah Boone's new lawyer. And I was like, well, sir, you said what? You said what? 
I personally have come to believe that the lawyer is just as crazy as the client. First of all, he stood up and opened his mouth and said out loud for all of us to hear, um, so the state has to prove that George Torres is no longer living. And I was like, right, that's why it's a murder trial. He's like, right, um, but state, y'all have not said what she did wrong. We've seen the body cam footage where she calls calls the police and she's like, hello, police. Um, I put him in a suitcase and it was an accident and we was playing hide and seek. And um, can I go smoke a cigarette now? And they, they were like, the police were like, um, you do what? You do what? She's like, mm -hmm. it was an accident. It was an accident. It was an accident. It was an accident. He got in the suitcase and I zipped him up and he begged to be let out. And then I got drunk and fell asleep. I mean, she didn't say she got drunk and fell asleep because according to her, she's not an alcoholic. But according to everybody else, she's a terrible alcoholic. And she's just like, she has said over and over and over and over on body cam footage that she zipped him in the suitcase and would not let him out. And what's more, she in her blackout drunken state, took her video camera and recorded him in the suitcase trying to get out. And I was just like, girl, what you're not supposed to do, even in a blackout, is record yourself committing a crime. And now here comes her lawyer is like, y'all did not say exactly what she did that was wrong. I mean, there was no gun. You don't have evidence that she beat him. We have evidence that she herself created of her zipping him in the suitcase. And the lawyer was like, it's not illegal to zip somebody in a suitcase. Are you saying it was illegal that she didn't let him, let him out? Are you saying it's illegal that she went and fell asleep? Are you saying it's illegal when um he begged for his life and she just stood there taunting him? I mean, no gun was used. So I don't, I don't think they can really bring this case. And I was like, you know what it takes to make me speechless? A lot. I was without speech. I was like, this happened to recorded the crime. And now she's saying, you prove it was a crime. Okay, 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 okay. And then <clears throat> this very bold lawyer, whose name escapes me, went on to say, also, she was not properly Mirandized. You know what Miranda is. Miranda is like, uh, you have the right to remain silent, blah, blah, blah. That little card they read to you. Child, remind me to tell you about the time I got Mirandized. It was not cute. Anyway, so um, hang on. He was like, your honor, my client was not properly Mirandized because they told her all the things. You have the right to remain silent and blah, blah, blah. They told her everything. But there's two sentences at the end of Miranda that they did not read. One of them was, do you understand what I have read to you? And um, are you agreeing to speak to me now? And the judge was like, right. Um, but she was Mirandized, right? He was like, yes, but improperly. He's like, you can see on the videotape where they ask her all the things, like they tell her all the things, but I don't have um, proof that they read her those last two sentences. And I believe that that is the policy of the local police station. And the judge is like, are you for real, sir? I mean, he said it in judicial language, but he said, are you for real? And when the state <laughs> stood up and talked, um, they were like, right, she was Mirandized. We have it on video, blah, blah, blah. And then he was like, when she was Mirandized again, now look, uh, by my count, and I just was not even really paying that close of attention because, you know, I was doing other things like I am want to do. She was Mirandized three times, what, at least three times. One of the times they may not have used those last two sentences. That's the one that's on videotape. Man, did, are you saying she did not understand? Are you saying she was still drunk from the night before? The the uh, the um defense attorney, this new defense attorney was like, I'm saying her statement was coerced. Sir, we can't coerce Sarah Boone to act right. Nobody is coercing Sarah Boone. Sarah Boone's act right is not fully installed it's a little loose it's some pieces missing do you think it is possible to co coerce this heifer we can't coerce her to do nothing nothing that she does not want to do does sarah boone do i know a little something about that life anyway he was just like 
when she went into that police station and they told her she had the right to remain silent and she immediately did not remain silent. She talked and talked and talked and talked. She's loquacious. Again, I know a little something about that life. Um, she went on and on and on telling her story and she must have said a thousand times. It was an accident. It was an accident. It was an accident. And I was just like, okay. Remember all the 4,000 times she said it was an accident on tape? Um, that ain't seem like coercion to me. And then this lawyer stood up in court and also said, yeah, we're not saying it was an accident. Hmm? So what, what, what are you saying it was then? Are you saying it was in a, he unalived himself? What are you saying? And this lawyer said, oh, it was self-defense. I don't, look, I am not a doctor. I am not a lawyer, but let's get this straight. You said, Miss Sarah, you said you put George in a suitcase. You said you zipped it up. You said you didn't let him out. You recorded yourself taunting him as he was inside of a suitcase and you were not letting him out. And now you're saying that was self-defense? Do you know how self-defense works? He's like, it was battered spouse syndrome and that was purely self-defense. Also, no gun was used. So, I mean, I don't, I think that's what we're going with. And I was like, this man is out of his mind. He is out of his mind. This trial is going to be fantastic. I can hardly wait. And then they were, he was like, oh, but also we want this other expert, Dr. Michael Berklin. And I was like, okay. The medical examiner, who the medical examiner is going to say what? That he's very, very dead and he did not die from being in a suitcase. He died from, I don't know what. Um, and then Miss Tanika did a deep dive on Dr. Michael Berklin and I was like, ah, Tanika girl come through, tell me every single thing. Apparently Michael Berklin, Dr. Michael Berklin, not a licensed physician. Mm -hmm. He was hired in the state of Missouri where he was promptly fired, although not prompt enough, before he messed up a couple of hundred autopsies. And they were like, sir, not only are you fired, we are taking your medical license away. And he's like, okay, don't worry about it. I can just move to Florida and I can go be a medical examiner down there. And then he moved to Florida or someplace, I believe, yeah, Florida, and became the medical examiner down there and messed up over a hundred autopsies. And they were like, sir, no, 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 no. Again, you are fired and your medical license is suspended you are not licensed to practice medicine and so he started just like teaching classes and stuff like yes i messed up all those court cases and all them autopsies but you gonna let that get in your way now i'm an expert um you can hire me and i'm gonna be an expert an expert in what sir how to mess up autopsies by the by Mr. Michael, Michael Berklin messed up a very famous autopsy. Now look, roll your minds back. I don't know if you remember this. Back around 1999, 2000, 2001, somewhere in that neighborhood. You know, Morning Joe, Joe Scarborough, he used to be um, in the House of Representatives, right? And um, there was a big scandal in his office because this lady was found unfortunately unalive in his office. Everybody was like, what happened? He comes in in the morning and it's a dead lady on the floor. You don't want that. That'll mess up the carpet. It's bad for your reputation. Everything is terrible when that happens, right? Michael Berklin performed the autopsy on the lady who was found no longer on this mortal coil in um, Joe Scarborough's office. And I was like, what she died of? Did somebody bonk her on the head? Did they pew pew her? Did they impale her? What happened? Turns out she had like some sort of heart condition, a medical condition, and she fell over and she bonked her head and she slipped the surly bonds of this earth. Okay, good. Please enjoy the Endless Heaven Buffet. Girl, I'll see you in the key lime section when I get there because you know I love me some key lime pie. Anyway, so um, this lady died of natural causes and, and uh, uh, complex bonkation. You, I, I, I'm not a doctor. Anyway, um, but Dr. Michael Berklin went on the news, lied to the press. Did He was like, oh, she had a little scratch on her head. Turns out she had a seven inch gash on her head. Child, the whole thing was a mess. And so I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. We wouldn't know nothing about you had you messed up some regular people's cases, but you messed up Morning Joe's case? Mm-mm. Uh, uh, sir? So I was like, okay, new lawyer, this is the expert you've hired. The dude who messed up the morning Joe case. Okay, I will be looking at scans. 
I will be listening to every single word you say. I am dying for um, the prosecution to get up and just take this man apart on the stand. Do we think he can be certified as an expert? He's no longer a medical doctor. And now the internet has found out because the internet, oh yes, they will do deep research on you, sir. And they will find out everything. And everybody's just going to let their little Google fingers do the walking. And they're going to promptly send all the emails to the district attorney. Because you know what we do here? Us of the, the world. World, those of us on the tubes of you, we nosy and we help. Help. We will, dear prosecution, did you see this thing about Morning Joe? Oh my God. Let me just link the Wikipedia article or whatever else goes with it. You know folks going to be sending that sending that article left, right, and center because that's what we do. Us web sleuths. Well, I'm not a web sleuth child. I'm a web gossip. I know my place. I'm not sleuthing nothing. I will watch a video. I will report breathlessly on it. I will be all up in your business. That's where my gifts lie. So anyway, um, a quack doctor uh, uh, allegedly, can you call a man a quack? Do do people get mad when you call them a quack? Um, okay. So let me just disclaimer in my opinion, allegedly for inter entertainment purposes only. This boy a quack. Anyway, last but certainly not least, Miss Sarah um, has come forward again. The audacity. Oh, I love it so much. She was like, um, okay, Your Honor, uh, through her lawyer, she requested um, somebody to come and help her when it's time to go to trial. And I was like, okay, she, she should have all the help she needs. She might need to go down to the nervous hospital. It's clear she needs some mental help. I think she got the wet brain, allegedly, for entertainment purposes only, in my opinion, and whatever other disclaimers I need to throw in there. Half a crazy. But um, in my opinion, um, she would like um, glam. She wants somebody to help her with her hair, and she wants somebody to help her with her makeup. Ma'am? That is what the other prisoners are for. Listen, I have never been to prison and Lord Jesus, I hope never to go. But um, I have watched Orange is the New Black. So that is all the research I need. And apparently also TikTok, what you got to do is get you a pack of Kool-Aid and mix it with some um, Vaseline or something and put it on your lips. And that is lipstick, ma'am. She wants hair and makeup help. You need mental help. I noticed she got her hair cut. Somebody down there at the prison has cut her hair or whatever. She is asking for a budget for hair and makeup. Ma'am, you not going on a TV show. I mean, you going on a TV show, but going on court TV as a defendant in a crime is not the same thing as being on TV. She ready for her close up. Miss Sarah is like, I have got this possibly shyster, possibly no account lawyer with the quack doctor coming to testify on my behalf and I want to look good. Can I get some cuter clothes, please? Um, I'm going to need somebody to help me with my hair and makeup. I prefer skirts. I would like to be taller, maybe a nice heel. Girl, Sarah um, is clearly out of her rabbit ass mind. That's the technical term for um, she out of her rabbit ass mind. But look, you know what I'm going to do. I, I will be perched. You know I'm always here. I'm hiding. I'm watching. And I am just looking at every single thing. I will find out what happens. And as soon as I know, oh, I'm going to let you know. Me and you, we true crime BFFs like that. I will be here reporting live every week. Listen, when this trial happens, how much vacation time do I have left? I just, I'm going to have to check ADP online because I... I might need to take some vacation days so that I can fully, fully absorb and cover this case. But until then, you'll be safe out there and I will see you soon. Bye.